Hello, in this Beaver Builder website strip down, I talk for the very first time to Ellie Hayes, who's a designer over at roveconsulting.com, which is also the site that we're going to be looking at in this episode. Now, Ellie was a really apprehensive guest. She wasn't sure about doing this at all, but as it turned out, she was excellent fun and this was a real joy to do. To keep it under an hour, I have cut out a few of the chats that we had on some of the plugins that she's still testing out, but otherwise it's all there. And I think this one might suit anyone who's still working out how they're going to lay out their own business website and what they're going to include in their package. Anyway, as always, I'll see you on the other side and bye-bye. Hello, Ellie. Welcome to a Beaver Builder website stripped down. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. So Ellie, let's kick off by talking a little bit about you, who you are, what you do, and maybe how you got into this business of designing websites. Okay, I'm Ellie. I'm about 12 years old and I was just bored and wanted an escape kind of thing, something to do. So our family got AOL back when it was still screechy dial up and pay by the minute and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was making websites on there with AOL homepages and GeoCities and then later front page and Dreamweaver and then finally WordPress. And so I've basically been doing it kind of all my life, I guess, because I'm 34 now and I've just always loved web design. I love that it's kind of a creative outlet, artistic outlet without needing to buy a lot of supplies. You can just take it with you wherever you want to go and ideally get paid well for doing it. So it's kind of awesome. You move around a bit with your work. Yeah, I mean as much as as much as I can afford to do and now that my fiance is into doing the digital nomad thing too and web design, I think we'll we're going to head that direction again because I've lived in Australia quite a bit and then Singapore and traveled kind of all around, including London, where you're from, and yeah. just kind of made it work and worked out internet cafes or wherever I could find the internet or hotspots and things like that. And it's tricky, but you can make it work if you really want to do that. And we're probably going to get like a truck and a trailer and just go around the U.S. because I've actually not really explored much of the U.S. And so that'll be fun, I think. And we'll just keep our expenses low and just live freely. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, I love it. I love that freedom that we've got. Do you want yeah. to tell us a bit about Rove Consulting? And this is actually the, the site that we're going to be looking at for the strip down today. So it's your own business site and the one that we're going to look at in more detail. So tell yeah. us a little bit about the actual business and how okay. it became Rove. Okay. Well, for a long time, I just kind of did websites. I didn't, I mean, I knew I was a business in a sense that I was making money, but I never um, really thought of myself as a business or a web designer. It was just something I like to do and people paid me for it. But then I had this epiphany like, well, I'm, a, I'm actually a web designer. Like that's my job. I don't need to keep trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. I'm already doing it. So once I kind of had that strange, obvious epiphany, I started looking at it more as an actual real life business. And so I had PDX freelance for a little while in Portland. Um, mm -hmm. PDX is the airport code for Portland. So I had PDX freelance and then I've been, um, I decided I wanted to expand more and not just be PDX freelance, but kind of more like a little mini boutique agency and do more business marketing and kind of a full business identity, virtual yes. identity strategies, because it's really fun to just work with people for the long term, not just here's your site, buy. For me, I really like that. So, And so I've done more about investing in tools for better care plans and offering as many things as I can around web design besides just the actual design part and that's been working out really well and so that's where I've started taking real consulting more recently. And I kind of know you quite recently from the Beaver Builder group because you've been taking part in all those kind of conversations that many of us have been having about setting up our care plans and and mm -hmm. how to extend our businesses. You know it does feel to me I don't know about you but so much has just changed over the last year with page builders it's made us have to rethink our businesses a little bit. Is that yeah. the case with you? Yeah I'm um, Yes and no. I mean, it's definitely given me more tools to do things easier, which has been huge. Um, and in some, but in some ways, I think I kind of, I don't know. In some ways, I still do things the same. But, um, but I really love the page builders a lot. Like they definitely opened up more opportunities for doing websites quickly, but without sacrificing quality. I like to think I'm pretty fast, anyways. But it kind of just helps me be even faster, but but still give a really great quality product and. It's also just more design elements that I maybe wouldn't have thought to try that the page builders offer. I try to avoid the, um, the pre-built things just because I don't want 
the sites to look like all the other sites out there, but I get some inspiration from those and it's nice to be able to look at almost any site I see now and think I could probably build that and yes. and to challenge myself to do that and to try new things that are different than other people are doing, but still um, familiar so that people know what they want from the site when they go to it. So they're not like confused by it or anything like that. Uh -huh. Ellie, did you have a framework before you adopted Beaver Builder? It's sort of it's kind of embarrassing to admit because I hated it and it's got a bad rap, but like Theme Forest, you know, uh -huh. um, I'd buy some themes on there and almost notoriously there's something majorly wrong. There's a few good ones on there, but if you buy a theme and there's something wrong, you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. So I've bought a lot of themes and never really found what I wanted or I'd find something I wanted, but had to buy a license for every single site in order to maintain it. And I really like that you just pay once and you're good for the year for uh, up, upgrades and tech support has been amazing. So I yes. guess before that was a lot of just playing with what I could find that was close enough and trying really hard to make it exactly what I wanted, but never quite getting there with any of them. And now if I can think of it, like I said, I can pretty much build it, which is it's just, I can't even explain to you how awesome it is. Like, I love thinking about it now. Like, it's a, a joy to think about as opposed to before it was like, how am I going <laughs> to figure this out? I know it. A lot more troubleshooting for sure. Yeah. And you've recently come through the WP Elevation course, or again, I never know what to call it, really. It's a, it's a whole world of its own, isn't it? WP yeah, Elevation. Seems to be um, in a really great way. It's like a course but a community as well and you can mm -hmm. just go in there similarly to these other groups and but it's very encouraging everyone's really supportive of each other if you have a tech question people are really good about putting in their experiences and we also share a lot of the wins and it really kind of helps build momentum you know like when you have these chats or you meet with someone for coffee that's a web designer and you get all that like energy of like i'm gonna go back and take over the world <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like that with WP Elevation, you kind of get, keep that motivation going, which has been really great. And I've just learned better processes and I have more confidence in being clear with the client without getting a lot of pushback or scope creep because I was really bad about letting clients just be like, just do this and just do this. And I'm like, okay. But then all of a sudden I'm doing a lot of extra work and not being paid. So it's just been a lot better for having boundaries and yes. being paid for what I deserve to be paid and not feeling bad about it, which has kind of been a challenge for me. Yeah. And has that uh, influenced the business? Because you're Rove Consulting. So did that come out of WP Elevation or was that there before? Uh, the so name was there before, but the way that I, like having clear care plans and having project um, scopes that are very clear before, I'd kind of just be like, I'll do it for 500 bucks. <laughs> like just, <laughs> you know, like there wasn't a clear process. and now. Yeah. But the process is I can explain it to my fiance who works with me sometimes or, or my VA. There's just, it's a lot more streamlined and outlined and easier to explain to other people or a client. And before it was a kind of just all in my head. And so it's really helped to be really clear about what it is I offer and what the prices are. Yeah. Maybe before, we'll, we'll start to take a look at the site now, but uh, maybe before we go on to sort of individual elements on the site, maybe we could take a, just a quick look at your portfolio because you could just tell us a little bit about the type of clients you would typically work with. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Putting you on the spot here with this. Actually, you're very brave because you're showing us your own business site. And I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm ashamed of any of my own sites. So <laughs> at least you've got some stuff together here. I, I love this, what you do on this. I thought, oh, I might nick that idea because you put videos, haven't you, of the websites? Yeah, there's, um, let me see, I think I did it. I either did it with this awesome screenshot plugin or this, I think it might have been this app right here. I don't know why it's not showing the name, Movavi or something. Uh -huh. It was like 30 bucks, but it saved me a lot of effort. Um, before it has those long screenshots, you know, where it just does a whole page or a part of the page, and I just always hate them, like, like these. They're okay, but you can't see anything that they do. These ones are pretty static. They were my older ones, but a lot of these have movement and different things, and you can't see that. And then the animated GIFs are huge, like the file sizes. And so they look kind of cool, but they're also not controlled by the user. And so I just tried this out, see if it works. Yeah, no, I thought it was quite ingenious, actually. I've not seen anybody else do anything like that. Thanks. So... I don't think I came up with the idea, but I can't remember where I saw it. But it's, <laughs> I think it works. 
and how do you generally get your work is it does it tend to be from people in your location or um a lot of it i would say most of it has been word of mouth but when that so back when before i was technically a business in my own mind i was getting mostly word of mouth and then when that sort of started to trickle out because i was working predominantly for a couple people consistently so when that started to fade out because they were doing other things i realized i needed to market myself and have a portfolio officially because mm-hmm. sometimes it's weird like i'll get emails from people especially back then before i had one and they were they didn't care that i didn't have a portfolio they just knew that i yes. could do it and so they hired me i was kind of surprised so but just to consistently have hopefully work coming in i decided i definitely needed to have an actual portfolio yeah and i think that's kind of the hardest thing isn't it i some of the greats out there in design don't have many sites that they can feature on their portfolio because, mm-hmm. well, one issue which you seem to have got around is the fact that you can at least do a video of the site as it was when you designed it. But I know yeah. with a lot of my sites, they don't look anything like how they were designed yeah. in the first place. Yeah. That's been a challenge. And that's why I don't have a ton of stuff on here. For one thing, I don't really want a huge portfolio work because <laughs> I kind of get embarrassed about my work. Like a week later, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go in there and adjust clients' sites as long as it's not a major change just because something is bugging me. But that's part of it. But then also, yeah, if you hand it over to a you know an office assistant or something that is just doing it because they kind of have to, they mess it up. And so yeah. I I just show the sites that they still look good and they've given me full control to make sure they stay that way, like my the ones on my care plans and stuff. Yeah. I see here you've got SEO. So is that kind of a, a big feature of what you do? Oh, this part? Yeah. I to click that. I don't know. Um, it's something I'm getting more into, um, especially because a lot of the key elements of SEO, just in a lot of ways, kind of the more basic stuff people don't have. And a lot of times it can make a huge difference. So there's this tool that is so far free for me to use. So I'm offering it for free. I'm not sure after the I think it's free. So um, it's free right now anyway. So they just put in their information and then it generates a report. And just the main thing it does is highlight the things that are definitely missing. Yes. Um, and I think that's been helpful to at least start the conversation of um, here's a few things that are missing. We can fix that. And then let's talk about the design or elements of it. Full on SEO, like all that stuff I, I can outsource, but I don't do myself. I think it's just like a whole other career, you know? Sure. And it's not what I'm passionate about. So I can do the the things that it definitely needs and then outsource it if I need to take on more. Yes. Is it so mostly you'll be dealing with kind of um on site SEO, is that right? Yeah. Just you know the I'm trying to think of what it needs. Just you know, if it doesn't have the right metadata, if it doesn't have uh-huh. a favorite icon or a location or the um things that Google care about that you might not even think about that much, like the um um, the XML file and the site map and all that kind of just sure little stuff. Yeah. So things yeah. like that. Exactly. All the stuff that I see and, and that, you know, clients that we, I would typically get wouldn't know all about that stuff they, and yeah. also have difficulty picking the right keywords for their business as well. Not yeah. Picking competitive ones or ones they can compete for. Yeah. They don't get local enough sometimes for the local businesses too. Like they're too yeah. general. So yeah. can help them. So, can we just take a look at the homepage again now? Because I, I was taking a peep, as I do, being nosy with <laughs> Inspector, looking at what was all the different elements. So you're using some of the third-party Beaver Builder add-ons to make up this. Do you want to just talk us through the homepage? I mean, there's a couple of things that I liked. So shall I, shall yeah. I pick those out first, the things that sure. I liked? Sure, I'm kind of always changing and messing around with it just to try new things that are so... I don't know, yeah. I'm just messing with it. <laughs> but, yeah, go ahead and tell me what you're curious about. Uh, well, actually, well, let's let's backtrack and go up to that one because that's actually yeah. something itself. So what's making that happen? Um, do you want me to go into the builder? or? Oh, if you like, yeah, that'd be fantastic. It's called Row Page Builder because, I don't know, I've, at first I did the white label thing with the option, like the agency version of Beaver Builder. And this is, I don't know if I should say this. I don't really want my clients to see that it's called Beaver Builder. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you should include that. Thing. <laughs> I just, it, to me, it seems a little, I think it's great. I love animals. It's cool. But I just think some people might be like, oh, that sounds like just some rinky dink. What you see is what you get. And it's not. So yes. I thought, well, maybe if I do the white label thing, like people won't even. And the yeah. truth, 
is no one really cares but i just was playing with that so that's why it says real page builder but it is beaver builder at this point I have exactly the same, you know, I mean, uh, because I make all these kind of videos, I'm so associated with Beaver Builder, but really when I'm trying to talk to clients, I generally remove their branding because I just, yeah. it doesn't kind of fit with many of my clients. Yeah. And then they, they think it's really, you know, I'm providing the full package. So like the yeah. theme can say their theme, you know, Salvador yeah. Molly theme or whatever. I just like the, the white labeling stuff. So yes, image panels. Yeah. This is a power pack thing, and I believe, and it's uh so you can see there's three in there, but you can put however many, and then and then I have another one. It gets really tweaky, so this uh -huh. it is actually doing that. <laughs> yeah. So then I have another one right here, and then I have um, and then I have it just a couple n negative because otherwise there was like this weird white line I couldn't get rid of. So uh -huh. the negative um, it makes me a little nervous. I don't know why. I feel like it's not going to look the same on all screens. This is weird. It does. <laughs> yes. This is an image separator. And for some reason it just trips out. Like it's really hard to even grab it if I wanted to. So I kind of just had to set it and forget it or else I'm going to get mad. <laughs> but, uh, but on the mobile version, okay. So up here is the mobile, mobile uh -huh. only version that this is text that I can edit, but on this it's an image cause it wasn't, that way I can make it stay there easier, like exactly where I want it and stuff. Ah, There's different ways to do it, but that's what I did. Ah, I would have never guessed it's a separator. I was, I was wondering how you managed to get that over the top. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It just works without having to figure out exact negative padding and stuff like that. But it, for whatever reason, that, that one does act so weird. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's in UABB. But I mean, it looks looks good. I think it looks good on my screen anyway. It does. Well, as you're in the page builder, might as well just scroll down because we can see the other things. The things that I liked, which because we started this early, you've already told me so. But uh, yeah, you're just going down to it. The um, what oh, appears to be, yeah, that transparent text there. But uh, yeah, you did a little cheat with it. Like it. Yeah. yeah. I accident. I did it on accident because I was like, "Ooh, you can put uh, images in the back of this." Uh -huh. Fancy heading, that's what it's called. That's a um, power pack thing. They usually have to work best if they're big. I mean, it just depends what you're trying to do. Yeah. But So this is the background image. And then I, it says one of the options, I think it starts with this, but one of the options is clip to image. Uh -huh. So it's trying all kinds of different stuff. What's really cool is if you have an animated GIF, it will put the animated GIF in the background. So that's kind of neat. Um, but what I did was, um, I think it might've even been an accident, but I put, they the same image there and then when i looked at it it was doing that it almost looks like it's transparent text yes and i did it with a different image originally and i um that wasn't me or my fiance his name's gar so it wasn't me or gar it was just a unsplash image but i just think that it's good to have you know your own face on there as much as you can tolerate <laughs> <laughs> yes. i it's it's this weird Thing of like wanting to be professional but kind of trying to stick with this travel adventure laid back thing so for now anyways we have these pictures and also because they're kind of the only ones I have that I like <laughs> that are big so that's that's why it shows those pictures but yeah basically it, it makes it look transparent which is kind of neat without yeah. like beating you over the head with something too animated or too out there I don't know no I like that I couldn't I uh, couldn't agree more as well about the you do need a bit of personal branding at the end of the day, you know, when people are looking yeah. around for someone to work with, it is the person they want to work with above all yeah. things. As uncomfortable as we all feel pushing <laughs> ourselves out there, we yeah. have to do it. Yeah. So many are, you know, when you are like, okay, what photos do I have? You go on Facebook and it's all these terrible selfies with your front <laughs> facing phone. Like, so we finally got a good camera and just kind of, we're messing around taking pictures and got a few good ones, but. Uh, it's not so much self-conscious although it's probably a little bit of that but it's just like what looks good on for what I'm trying to do and yes. clients can connect I heard well so people connect with the eyes you know so if there if there's eyes people will stare at it a little bit longer yes so it's just finding something that kind of fits with the look and feel and and I'm and I don't mind being up there <laughs> but yeah. yeah I think that I kind of just love that I found that by accident, but see, it's still actual text, which is kind of neat. That's great. Um, okay. Let's I could scroll down a little bit more. Cause it was another thing that I kind of like, it's a bit silly, I guess, but, uh, yeah. This is for mobile. 
just saying. Aha, uh-huh. yeah, so you double up the, yeah. Yeah, just for certain things, it was not cooperating. Like, it, this would be there, but then you could see, like, part of my face or whatever. So I was, I'm just going to, it might make the page a bit bigger, but it just works. Yes, so, yes. Oh, I think we, have we gone past it? It was just the, I think it was the no, next row up. The dots. Oh, oh the dots, it's yes, there we are. Uh-huh. There's another example of, so, you know, I have it set to um, desktop or mobile and, um, uh-huh. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I like. <laughs> why did I do this one? I can't, there's a reason I did it this way. Sometimes I have to remember what I was doing. I think it was cutting off strangely, like, um, on mobile, it would stop at people and then are saying about it. It was just getting weird. Like, so I like to, as much as I can, control where it does the, the break. So this yes. is two and this is one. Uh huh. Yeah, I get that. No, I, you know, because this is a, um, a UABB module, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, I need to click and find out. I'm pretty sure it's fancy text, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so I haven't used this, you see, because I kind of like it. As soon as that came out, I thought, ooh, I'll use that. And I thought, maybe it's too much, but I like yeah, this, what you've done. Be. Yeah, <laughs> just a few <laughs> dots. Yeah. yeah, and then there's this slide one, which I use on our about, which rotates different words. Oh, um, okay, yes. But it's super easy to overuse something like this, or like I was saying before um, on our other conversation, that it can, um, especially on mobile, it can make it one line and then when it types something out it drops to a second so the page is always moving which i really really don't like yes uh, it's like a yeah. huge pet peeve of mine same with like testimonials when it gets a shorter one so the page moves or it gets longer and the page goes i can't handle that <laughs> so i try to, that's why there's not a testimonial slider even though there's options for ones that make the page not move so i just wanted what i'm saying is i want an animation that was short enough to control it doing anything wacky yeah no i like it I mean, I'm going kind of just things are coming to my mind as I was looking through the site. One thing that I, you mentioned about testimonials, but actually you managed to resist doing what I think everybody now does with the, was it test? No, frequently asked questions. Sorry, apologies. I was looking at frequently asked questions and you resisted doing the accordion drop downs with Beaver Builder. Yeah, I do <laughs> like those, but I don't know. I guess yeah. I actually don't like my frequently asked questions page it's one of those ones i'm like eh, i'll get to it eventually I just, it's one of those things where it's like nothing i like like nothing i try is what i like you know what I mean? <laughs> yes uh, so it's gonna be a work in progress but yeah are you not a fan of the the drop downs or something the accordions yeah well i i've used them i still using yeah. them but i when i went to yours and saw the the frequently asked questions laid out on the page i just thought yeah, yeah what why do I do that? Why do I put them in those drop downs? Because it's actually a lot easier, I believe, now looking at this to just read it like that. Yeah, I think if I keep them short, I think if they were a little longer, like if they needed a couple of paragraphs or something, which probably uh-huh. some of them wouldn't hurt to have that, but um, yeah. then that would be good. But I kind of just tried to, I just kept hearing that you need to have it, to be honest. So I put it on there. <laughs> and it, these are questions I get pretty frequently. So. Yeah. It's always yeah. a hard line of like being totally out there with as much information as you think people need and being so out there that it's annoying or too much or people get overwhelmed or, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. kind of a weird to know where that line is, I guess. Yeah, I, well, we do see, don't we, frequently asked questions being kind of hijacked as sort of secondary sales, you know, the, yeah. the questions are so phony. Um, well, it's just... I've seen some people where they word them in a way that's kind of detrimental. I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, you know, you, you want to always put yourself in the best light you can with a little humbleness, of course, but you know, it's just don't, don't sell yourself short just because other people are trying to ask you questions that minimize paying you. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just think it's a good opportunity to explain that even though people ask questions maybe about price and things like that, that you're still bringing in clients that are paying you what you're worth. Yes. I don't know. I feel like that's a big problem with web design. I mean, I can't tell you, I'm sure you've had this happen where how many times people have asked me to do something for pro bono or for mm-hmm. your, for your portfolio, you can do this. And <laughs> if it's doing me a favor for me to do work for them for free mm-hmm. and I would do it. I mean, depends on the situation, but now it's like, I need to value my own work. So sure. <laughs> I, I probably should, if I'm honest, frequently asked questions is, will you do it for free or will you do it pro bono? But I'm not going to put that on there. So just, <laughs> always put yourself to, to setting yourself up for the clients that you want to work with and you, you know, 
that will respect you and stuff like that. Absolutely. But, you know, I think probably all of us have done something for free. or, or yeah. And I think we've kind of needed to, haven't we, just to yeah. get there, to get to where, well, I don't know if I'm there, uh, anywhere close to there, but, you know, I, it, you had to go through that process, I guess, of getting it wrong to know how to get it right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's still things I would do if it, but there has to be some sort of give and take. I don't, I feel like sometimes I have um, people I know that want to start a business and I'm like, okay, let's, I'll build your site, it, especially a basic one to start. And it's like, they don't put enough of their own money or heart into it. There's this weird thing where if you pay, you actually care. <laughs> And if you don't pay, sometimes you don't care as much. So I'll make sites and they just sit there like they don't. So there has to be a little more going on for me to do pro bono work, but I'll still do it on occasion. Yeah. Especially if it's something I think is amazing or will promote, um, will get me out there a little more. Like I've done sites for people that are definitely way, way, way under, way under what they should have paid me technically. But I did it because I wanted to have that on my portfolio or wanted to um, work with them in general. It's just a good opportunity. So there's, there's value in opportunity. It's just yes. making sure you're not getting taken advantage of, I guess. Yes, exactly. Hey, it's something I keep forgetting to ask people. So I must ask you your theme. I think I know the answer to this. It's generate press, isn't it? Yes. I was using Beaver Builder's theme and it was better than what I had before, which was headway. Ah. Uh... <laughs> I loved Headway at first. It was so amazing. I was like, this is crazy. I can, but anyway, it's a sad story for another day. But, um, <laughs> but then the beaver theme fixed a lot of the issues I had with that. I mean, at the end of the, at the end of my time with Headway, all I had was a blank theme. Yes. It was just like a blank white page. And then I did everything in Beaver Builder and to feel like I don't need to do that anymore. Now I can get all this stuff taken care of and customizer that I want uniform on all the pages. And it's just been Generate Press is amazing. And as you probably know, the community for that is really great. Mm -hmm. And the guy that runs it is amazing. And he is really good with tech support and all that stuff. He's just a really good guy. It's been, he really cares about his product. When you're doing other client projects, do you move around or is that now your permanent theme? For now it is. I, I think there are certain situations where I might use something else. I can't think of what it would be. But mm -hmm. I mean, there's the clients that already have the theme and they're really set on that theme. So unfortunately, I probably with that but for the most part people in my experience for the most part have let me do whatever i want which is pretty great can we take a look in the back end at your plugins is that okay sure uh, let's get out of here yeah like i said don't feel free to ask me any questions i like helping people because a lot of people have helped me lately and it's just been really nice to share like share ideas and back and forth and so yeah, you can always ask me anything. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice to run through the plugins that people use and why, you know, because it really mm -hmm. does open up. Well, I think so anyway. I say this, I've been doing a couple of these strip downs now and I just boldly claim that everybody's fascinated by this, but I think it may be just me. But anyway, see, the first <laughs> one on your list there is one I don't know. Uh, the one I'm not using. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. I think it's... Um, I'm pretty sure that's like a um, related post plugin. Sometimes I'll just play around with things and if I'm not using it, I, so like um, I only have maybe five blog posts right now, but once I start getting more, which is what I'm working on, then I'll have, you know, 50 or whatever. And that thing will be a little thing along the bottom that says, if you like this post, you'll like this one and that one. Does yes. that make sense? Like a related post plugin. Yeah, absolutely. I think so <laughs> I think that's what that is. A kismet. We know what that is. I think most people who watch this probably yeah. know because it comes, doesn't it, preloaded. Yeah, and they recently did something to it, and I don't really get spam anymore. I get it in my form, but not a lot, so it's cool. They're all in, in one WP security. That's your choice. Or, yeah. Uh, um, let me see how this one's this. Again, it's kind of just trying different things. I've tried a couple of different ones, trying to get the other ones. But I just... Uh, seems like people try to get into WordPress sites a lot, like try to hack them and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of clients don't realize and why the care plans are important. But people really, I mean, it's just a bot. Like it's just something trolling the internet, looking for any easy way in. It's not a personal vendetta against them if they're hacked. So a lot of people think I'm never going to be hacked because everyone mm -hmm. likes me or whatever. <laughs> but it's not personal. It's a, it's a program that's doing it. So I kind of just try to be up on whatever I can do for security stuff that will improve it for my site and then apply it to client stuff. So that was probably one of the ones I've been fiddling yeah. with to see how it works. 
what about duplicate page and post? I guess that's fairly obvious, but I love that one. Yeah. So yeah. if you go, um, it is pretty obvious, but it saves a lot of time. And I use it in kind of, I don't know if other people do this. Sometimes I'm like, do other people? I should ask. So you, there's another one that says clone, but this is duplicate. Yeah. If I'm going to do a bunch of stuff on, say, my home page, and I'm like, this could totally, I have backups, but it's just easier for me if I duplicate the page and then call it. Let's see if I have one on here you know, backup 737. Seven. That way, if I am messing with it, it's just not working out because there's not really an undo feature, especially if you save it to view it live, then I can mm -hmm. just revert back to this. So I, I use the duplicate a lot, actually. Yeah. And then I also, because I kind of have each page within Generate Press set up in a certain way that I want all my pages to look like. So a lot of times I just duplicate my home page or whatever, and then go in there and delete delete a few rows and start it so that way it's already kind of uniformly looking similar on all the pages yeah yeah, yeah I, I mean i've been using this actually you've reminded me of the plugin that i think i first used and i'm using another one but it's it's actually put some stuff in the toolbar so i'm gonna probably swap it to yours next but i use it for uh, often when there's custom fields in some posts or something then they're pre-filled with a lot of stuff it saves some time just to be able to press that duplicate yeah wonderful yeah yeah, and same in Beaver Builder, the clone thing. I love that thing. Just yeah. clone the row, or duplicate the row, rather. I just, so yeah. if I'm working on a row and I'm not sure how it's going to work out, I'll duplicate it. That way it's right there. I can just delete the one I've been working on it and have the one I already had, you know? So, yeah. and then, so it's just been really easy that way instead of having to, I don't know, make changes and then save it so you can look at it live and like, oh, I don't like that, and then rebuild it. I mean, you can also save rows and modules, which I do a lot, but just for quick, easy, testing something out it's nice to just duplicate a row or duplicate a page yes and uh, you use the same image optimizer as me but i i never know how to say that it sounds like it should go ooh, <laughs> ew, <laughs> ew. <Yeah. laughs> e -W 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 image optimizer yeah it's kind of funny i've tried a few different ones but this one's pretty straightforward so i like it yes is that something you would put on client sites as well yeah um kind of depends on what what is on the site you know, there's a lot of images and stuff, but yeah, it's good. I've tried a few different ones, like I said, and it, this one just seems to always be consistent and working and my page speeds are pretty good. So when I find something that works, I usually stick with it. I see you use Manage WP. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I really do. I've, I've had so much trouble learning how to, I don't know what it is. I get brain blocks about certain things and for whatever reason, I would make the dev site and then when it came to porting it over live, I just you know, and like figuring out that my SQL databases and moving those in like just, it just, my brain would explode. So I would pay someone on five or five bucks to do it, which was totally worth it to me. But I really like that with Manage WP, which is free with GoDaddy hosting. Um, don't judge me too much on that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I could go into a whole thing about why I don't mind using it. But um, anyways. Hey, shall we do it? Yeah, Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. Um, I get that there's a lot of flack about GoDaddy, but they've gotten a lot better over the yeah. last even couple, I don't know, months or a year or something. Um, I used to not be able to stand them, but <laughs> um, but after being with a, quite a few different hosting sites and stuff like that, and some of them were okay, it's just there's certain functionalities like that because they're so big, they can bring on really quickly and easily. Um, their tech support has gotten a lot better. Every once in a while, I get a punk kid, but <laughs> for the most part, they're really, they care and they're interested in helping me. And yeah, um, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I know what you mean or whatever. I mean, it's just nice to have people that are responsive to what you're saying. And for the most part, I've had that. Other, other hosting companies, I had one for a while that was a smaller one and it was fine, but um, they had no phone support at all. It was all email. And they're pretty responsive, but I don't know. I just, I've actually been really surprised how much I like GoDaddy hosting so far, knock on wood, but, and then it's free with Managed WP. So without GoDaddy, it's $2 a month. And if you have a lot of sites that can add up and there's probably discounts, but what I like about Managed WP is that you pay for what you use or it's included if, if it's an included feature. Uh, and so you're only using certain things. So one of the, so the best thing about it to me is that I can clone migrate a site off of an existing site. So if I have a client like Tabor Tot, I can um, migrate that to my own dev site. And then I usually migrate it twice just so I can have one that's there and one that I'm working on. And then I can 
mess with it and make all the changes and then put it back live with the clone feature. And it's just, I've only had maybe one or two little minor issues with that, um, with cloning something over. But I mean, it's like a couple clicks versus being totally lost and clueless about how to do it. <laughs> it's just been nice. I've, it's sort of weird because I feel like I'm pretty good at what I do, but then there's these things that it seems like should be obvious and everyone knows how to do it. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so it's just nice to have tools that do that now a lot more effectively than ever before. Absolutely. What kind of package are you on with GoDaddy? Is, do you get um, this in all packages? It's not the, the basic share, which maybe that's partly why I have good luck with them because I'm paying a little more. Um, I think it's the pro business pro and it's like 30 or 40 bucks a month or something. And I got a coupon that helped out with that. That's the other thing. <laughs> GoDaddy's got a lot of coupons on retail me not and stuff. So I almost never pay full price <laughs> so far. It's good. If it ends up not being good, I'll switch off, but yeah, it's been going well. Yeah. They get a, they do get knocked a lot, but you know, Beaver so Builder. Terrible. <laughs> well, you know, you say that, but actually, I mean, I, when I first kicked off, they were my first hoster and I kept them for a long time because I was on a shared server and it was so good. And everybody was saying, you can't be with them. You need to get off them and yeah. Bluehost and all those people. And I, I bought Bluehost and duplicated sites over. And uh, yeah, they weren't, they weren't doing as well as my GoDaddy shared hosting was. So I've never, I've never had oh, a beef. Good. That's good. Uh, I've had, I can tell you so many different things about different hosts, but for the most part, I've had a really good, good luck yeah. with them. I think yeah. a lot of times it's just kind of like the cool thing to hate on GoDaddy. I don't know. <laughs> you know I mean? Hey, you say that people were like, "Oh, that's the problem." It's not anything else that's going wrong. It's definitely GoDaddy hosting that's your problem. You know what I mean? Like, if you're having these issues. Yeah. Well, there was a lovely period on the Beaver Builder Facebook group while um, Beaver Builder was actually running on GoDaddy. They they did move in the end, but it's not because they were unhappy. Aren't they uh, collaborating with GoDaddy or something? Yeah. Well. Something. Yeah, they did a little deal. GoDaddy took their light version of Beaver Builder and they helped them and they added in a few modules for them, oh, okay. you know, so it's GPL, so it's to build their own builder. Yeah, so there's that kind of friendship there. But I think they were on GoDaddy hosting before that happened, I believe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Completely off what we were supposed to be talking about. Anyway, oh, let's move I on. I could tangent on more, but I'm trying to like hold <laughs> my tangents a little bit. <laughs> um shall we oh what's th what's this next plugin official stats counter plugin oh yeah that's just stat counter i don't know there's probably other options i was thinking about this recently it's i've used stat counter for years and oh. it's free and it just gives me for me personally gives me pretty much everything i need to know in a way it does what analytics does in a way it okay. just checks you know who's who coming in and from where and stuff like that so okay uh, and you, can you tell the individual pages they're going to? Yeah. So um, if they, if they, which page they come in from, because I uh -huh. might link a blog post and so I'll get more hits on that or whatever. And then what they look at, you know, just which pages they go to and then whether they're Windows or Mac and then their browser. So it's kind of interesting over the years I've seen Internet Explorer be the top one and cringing because I can't stand internet explorer to now it's more mobile so it's kind of interesting to see what trends are in the way that people interact with the site not only my site individually but just what they're using to access it and things like that it's useful cool and page list again you've got a lot of plugins that are new to me so <laughs> that's um that's just a sitemap type thing so if i put this short code into oh. a page it'll show all the pages oh Google likes it, I guess. That's what I've heard. <laughs> ah. But then also there's a sitemap file in it. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Power Pack, we obviously know. We talked about yes. uh, quotes collection. That's new to me as well. I think I recently took that off because it was ah. doing that weird movement thing. But it was just, I had testimonials on the side page of my blog right here. Uh -huh. Just because I don't know what to do with this side thing. I want to have it, but I want to. This is not how it's going to look in the next couple months or something. I'm just figuring this part out. But it was just a basically a testimonial rotator right there, really basic. Ah, uh, yes. And your social share, that's a new one as well to me. Um, oh, yeah. Ultimate social media. There's a lot of different mm -hmm. ones, you know, but a lot of people talk about that. For right now, it's just doing that on the top. Okay. Yeah. You're quite happy with that one. Uh, yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's got a lot of, got a lot of options that... Are very clear about what it is you're doing when you're in there making the changes so 
for now. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, I'm open to them, but you know, just, just fill it out or whatever. Yeah. yeah I like to keep them pretty simple. I think there might mm -hmm. be part of the share. Let me see. Uh -huh. Eat. Um, I think it's got the share things in there too. So like, like these guys. Yes. I think that's part of that too. Ah, uh, right. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's have a pop part of me is like, is anyone ever going to use this? But I might as well have it on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's an option. Um, and let's have a look. Oh, right. So where are we up to? Yeah. Uh, any font. I know what that does. Yeah. Cause sometimes like with the text only thing, yeah. a lot of times I use header um, modules because uh -huh. it's so easy to change the text around to look exactly how I want. And it's not really with the text editor. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Yes. Um, so I don't really use the texts field too often, but when I do, I like to use open sans and that's not one of the ones that comes up. So I just have that on there. Uh -huh. and, and white label CMS. How do you use that? Um, so let me see, see if, it's, if I have it working right now. I was playing with different things to where, um, not sure if it's on this one. I think I might have tried it on the preschool site. I was trying different things to where when a client logs in, yeah, they see what I want them to see. Um, so it might not say, so right here, welcome to your website. I think it says something else or, um, Yes. Website is designed and maintained by Rove instead of WordPress. Yes. And then on the dashboard, I have walkthrough videos so that they, if they choose to, they can watch the video and know how to make some basic changes to the site or see, I'm trying to remember if that was the one that WP Elevation made. They made a, a white label CMS plugin of some kind. Yeah, I think it is. Oh. I'm looking here. Oh, yeah. It's a video user manuals.com. Yeah. yeah. So it is. Yeah. So they also make the video user manuals. Um, uh -huh. And I'm a, delved into that too much and stuff, but it's nice to be able to, like I have some friends that are interested in becoming web designers, so I've made them dev sites and I'll put those videos on there because I can't sit with them and physically help them learn it. Uh -huh. So just stuff like that has been good. And then also I can link to my blog post within the dashboard, within their client dashboard. Uh -huh. So I can kind of, I can stay in front of them without talking to them regularly. Yes. I don't know, just different things. They're kind of neat to be able to make it more, an experience with you and the client and, and not the client and WordPress. Yeah. Oh, so we've got word fence as well on there for security. Yeah. I feel like I use that one more. I kind of yeah. don't really remember setting up much with the other one. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of an ongoing thing to figure out how to yeah. keep it secure, but backing up regularly and stuff like that. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, I, I like the next plugin, uh, WPD Beaver Builder Editions, Doug Peltain, but do you, do you use that on this site for anything? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot again. Well, I just, what, oh, okay. That's my add-on Beaver Builder. For some reason, I'm mixing them up in my head. I was like, what Yeah, is this? this is the one that's, um, Doug Bell Chambers. Uh, yeah, here's one way. Optimizes the videos and... Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was having a lot of site speed issues with the portfolio page uh -huh. and this, if I'm remembering correctly, what's going on here. Um, <laughs> they make it so that they don't auto load it. It only loads when someone clicks the video. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that seemed to help the speed a lot. I think in general, it wasn't really a problem, but my site speed was like F and I wasn't having that. So, pick that up a lot luckily. Oh, so, and uh, then you can kind of customize it. You can put any icon instead of the play icon. You can put a um you can put a little like transparency thing over it. It's just more customizable than just what YouTube gives you straight up. So, so yeah. it kind of changes color and stuff. Yeah. I, I do you know what I didn't spot that because I, I love this plugin uh, of Doug's because for the same thing as soon as you've got multiple YouTube videos, it has to load mm -hmm. the scripts, doesn't it, for each one in turn. And this just puts the yeah, the thumbnail instead in, until somebody clicks and it loads what's needed for that particular video. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's helped out a lot for that kind of thing. Yeah, fabulous. And you're another WP Forms user. Um, everyone swears by Gravity Forms and maybe I just, yeah. maybe it's just my luck. I don't know. I didn't like it. 
Um, yeah. But I've been tempted to go back because I can do some CSS, but I'm not great at it. And what I love about um, the Beaver Builder and the add-ons and stuff is that you can really customize beautiful looking forms. You know, like when you click on it, it changes the color and all that. Mm. And at least so far, it seems like that doesn't happen with WP forms. I think it's mainly gravity forms. Yeah. Maybe I can't remember. So I don't know. I bought it for now. And cause I was also having... Um, I didn't know, but I was only using Contact Form 7. I think that's why it's still on there. Mm-hmm. Or the whatever comes with Beaver Builder, whatever they're using with that. And I wasn't getting my emails. And I didn't know it because there was no there was no thing where it shows the entries. See her there? Ah, uh, yes. And so there was no stored entries on it. And I didn't, I just thought I wasn't getting it. Cause I don't get a ton. In fact, mm, yeah. we never get them except spam. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that'll change soon. But basically, I wasn't getting a lot anyways, and I knew that, so I didn't realize it. But it's so I just wanted something that definitely caught the emails, whether I actually received them in an inbox. And then I need to figure out more about the whole SMTP mapping yes. email thing. I don't remember that being as much of an issue last, mm. until recently, so I don't know if I've just been lucky or what, but it definitely is becoming a problem now, and so I need to do that. Yes, I was doing that myself today, yeah. <laughs> trying to get emails to come that weren't coming. So yeah, it does. Yeah, people and say I, it's pretty easy once you do it, but like it's the first time. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, and then after that, I'm fine. Like once I do it once, I'm okay. But I just have stress around trying new things. Yes, kind of silly. Yeah, no, I think I mean I, I've looked at WP forms and it looked really uh, lovely because it looks it looks particularly client friendly as well. You know, forms yeah. there. I mean, the only reason I, I stuck with Gravity Forms just because it came first, and probably I'll stick with it because it's got so many add-ons that you can't yeah. really go wrong with it. But it's yeah, really WP. Brutal. Yeah, but this is really nice and it's going to grow, isn't it? WP Forms. So I think pretty good I choice. Think so. I think. Yeah. Building out the forms was really fun compared to other mm. compared to my experience with other form makers. I think Gravity Form is probably really great. I think I just wasn't utilizing it as well as I could have or something. So I'd yeah. probably give it another shot. But WP Forms is really fun to play around with. It's really easy to drag and drop and things like that. So. And maybe there's a bit of the, you know, because you're more on the design side of yeah. things. So it's kind of a bit ugly, isn't it? Gravity forms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think you kind of align, you know, with the the product you feel comfortable yeah. with. If you're a designer, you're more likely, I think. To yeah, want. I'm totally one of those people that like buys the wine bottle that's cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> more because I don't know anything about wine anyway. So if I have to pick something, it's going to be the one with the dog on it or something. <laughs> So yeah, that's probably part of it. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Yoast here, is is that always been the SEO plugin you've used? Uh, I feel like I've tried other ones. I honestly don't mess with it too much. It's one of those yeah. things where everyone uses it. Same with, uh, what's that other one? I don't remember. Jetpack. It seems like everyone uses oh, yeah. Yoast and Jetpack for whatever reason. Um, I've heard there are some security issues with Jetpack, so I haven't messed with it too much. But And I could mm-hmm. be wrong about that, or it's changed. But... Um, so I just kind of try to play with the popular plugins to see what I might be missing. So that's one of those. And I, it kind of helps, um, cause I don't, I don't know if you've seen it, but let me see if it'll do it, but it'll show whether it's green, yellow, or red for whether, yeah. Yes. So I yes. need to work on some of these, but it's just nice to know where I'm like, oh, I'm probably more or less good on that, but I should work on some of these other ones. And then it has the, um, stuff at the bottom, I think on the pages all kinds of stuff in here let's see but yeah like see so you can yes it's pretty straightforward even for somebody that's not super seo oriented like me so that's nice yeah yeah well thanks for showing us around the plugins there um i've completely we've been chatting and i've i haven't been looking at any questions really but i guess what i normally ask people really but it's a kind of client project was there any sort of difficulties or any things that you particularly learned from building this site so i guess it still applies to you oh uh, yeah was there anything that yeah. really tripped you up? I mean, stuff trips me up every day. But <laughs> that's partly why I love it. I love that I don't know what I'm doing in a way because it just means that I always have something new to learn and new to try. And as much as I kind of push back against trying new technical side stuff, I love trying new design side stuff. So I could sit mm-hmm. here all day. I mean, my full-time job could just be messing with this site if if that made <laughs> me enough money to live, which it wouldn't. So it's just fun to constantly be trying new things and in the groups seeing what other people do and giving those a shot or um, coming up with suggestions kind of outside of the box that's another thing I like about the groups I'm like 
someone will ask a question and like maybe this would work and it's just kind of it's almost like brain games you know those things <laughs> or tetris uh-huh. or something it gets <laughs> your brain constantly working in ways that normally it wouldn't and that's why i think i like this job because i kind of like just the constantly changing aspects of it i would be really bored if it wasn't constantly changing and that's probably why i like working with different clients too you know it's always a different client different project and so i'm really <laughs> i'm really add i need a lot of mental stimulation to stay engaged in stuff and considering I work for myself, it'd be really easy to procrastinate, which I still do. But yeah. part of why I don't is because I'm doing something fun. And so that's why I love doing this stuff. Yes. But I get tripped up all the time. Uh, maybe before I let you go, because I think everybody's a little bit interested in care plans. It, is that something that you recently added? Yeah, I sort of dabbled in it. And then mm-hmm. I wasn't able to talk about it very well. So Mm-hmm. And I've saw these lists and they're to me I was just like blah blah blah. I don't know what <laughs> yes. like so I got a lot clearer about what it is each of these things would require me to do. And some of them are really straightforward and easy, but some of them, depending on the client especially, take more time. Yes. And then um like what do I realistically want to be paid to deal with that? Yes. So at first I was like, twenty dollars a month, just please pay me. <laughs> but now I'm like, I want to make a live a recurring revenue living at some point so that it's easier to travel and be a digital nomad so i'm getting more serious about this side of it and it's just figuring out where mm-hmm. i can go with it and it is fun i it's not as creative so i'm not as passionate about it but it's mm-hmm. it's still some room for creativity especially because there's the support ticket thing and mm-hmm. and um someone else i don't remember if it was one of the groups you're in or elevation but they said to offer a coaching call every month and that's actually uh-huh. you know in a lot of ways just checking in and keeping you in their mind but also it's a way to upsell I mean in a you know in a nice way I'm really bad at the, the selling <laughs> thing. I don't want to sell like a salesman as soon as I do I just but it's just an opportunity to be like oh you have this idea you want to explore and it's just been in their head maybe you know like maybe having something another feature or something on their site so now it gets them a chance to talk that out with me so I don't do those every month unless they're available and want to do them, but I'm always open to talking on the phone, really. Yes. And a lot of my clients are the types that are more phone-oriented than they are email, so it works pretty well Yes, continuing that client relationship. Yeah, your, your plans are very similar to Nathan, who I do WP Builds podcasts with, uh, kind of similar pricing, similar kind of offering because he has that personal service. I do cheap and cheerful where they don't get to contact me and talk to me <laughs> i just look after yeah. their sites yeah so do, you, do you have all these things on yours as well i have a lot of those things but it's just that they don't get to have a meeting with me and i don't fix i only fix updates you see any updates mm-hmm. that have happened from the software so yeah so yours actually takes because you've got support tasks and that can be anything i guess with your care plan is that right for the most part i mean one of my clients is going to start an e-commerce and it's not included because that's going to be a real uh-huh. undertaking but, yes. um, you know, adding a picture or changing some text. And sometimes it goes a little over uh-huh. the amount of time that I allot. And this is kind of a balance as far as how I'm comfortable with the client. But but a lot of times there'll be a couple months where they don't do anything. So I don't push it too hard as far as like, okay, you know, your, your five minutes are up or whatever. <laughs> I try yeah. to just strike a balance with that. But yes, yeah, I mean, yes. It's, this works well and I've had clients that want to just pay it all up front to get it over with and not have to worry about it so that's kind of nice and yeah um, it was just for me a matter of framing it in a way that I was definitely offering value to the client instead of like not knowing how to talk about that because it's hard to sell something when you don't even know what you're selling <laughs> it was, yeah. I knew it in my head I just couldn't verbalize it so this has been really good to just have it down is it something uh, again we're going a slightly off tangent for uh for a strip down but uh it's been uh, coming up quite a bit when do you introduce a care plan to the is that changing at all with clients um yeah. when do you first talk about it more or less at the beginning now but yeah. before not at all because <laughs> i didn't yeah. know what i was yeah. talking about so yeah it's pretty much there's been some debate over whether it's required like because the problem is if they don't manage the updates and stuff which a lot of them don't know how to do or they would do it so if they're not doing that, then it really does leave their sites vulnerable to all kinds of stuff going wrong. Yeah. Um, I kind of have this 
little analogy of those like you wouldn't buy a nice house and then never maintain it because it would it would run down and it would become you know thieves would want to break into it and stuff because they think no one's taking care of it so i just i'm that yeah. safeguard that makes sure that everything's running well yeah. and really i kind of hate the analogy for the price of a cup of coffee but like literally that's the price you're going to make sure that your site is always up and running and nothing's going wrong and if something does go wrong I'm, i know within seconds usually and i can go in there and fix it and no one would even know that something happened so i think yeah. it's just really important and supposed to just leave it in and forget in it you know thank you you know um yeah i took you down a different path entirely then but is there anything else that you <laughs> ought to show me on this site before we we sign off um uh i'm i'm kind of proud of my testimonials page let's have <laughs> I feel a look like I at yes, it, so. please. okay actually let's look on i always like go back and forth between browsers like to see what's live versus what i'm looking at because yeah. on here it's just like i don't want to see all this i'm trying to see what the client sees uh -huh. anyways this is what the client sees yes um i had the little like box the little quote mark before you know the little like this uh -huh. is a quote and it was just it was sort of like the fact page in a way it was just it was what it was it wasn't particularly visually stimulating so i use this program right here this um smart mock-ups i paid a few bucks for it i really like it actually I'm surprised how worth it that was mm -hmm. um and then i just tried to make something different that was still again familiar so it wasn't the rotating thing either because yes i mean on mobile and stuff you got to hold your finger it doesn't always work i just can't stand the rotator i think it looks kind of cool but it doesn't really serve the purpose you want which is people reading the testimonials mm. so i just took a snippet of one there which is from a restaurant so i just put a restaurant image unsplash is amazing i don't know if you know about that site for images yes. mm. so at least for now i'm using unsplash i'm going to eventually take my own but but that's mm. just for now and then i just put i found a good image that worked with the site Yes. Um, that I was talk that's being talked about because before it was just business owner like I want people to know exactly what site it was so I'm just kind of connecting those dots a little better uh -huh. and it surprisingly worked in mobile that's always the balance is like is this gonna look good in mobile yes and tweaking it until it does <laughs> it's just sometimes having those mobile only rows and stuff but this seems to work out really well and I just like that it's that it's easy to see what's going on and understand but not you know just yes. blocks of text that's really good and then there's the let's do this and there's this is another thing i played around with is the idea of the client application um they talk about it a lot in wordpress elevation so it's just a lot of clients will um, freak out when they see this so i try to make sure that they know we can also have a phone call about it but if they want to enter information there they can uh-huh ellie Thank you. I think we've probably been talking for long enough. So yeah, I don't know probably. if you want to keep all that. It was kind of a lot of talk. <laughs> I, I know it's because we've had our first chat, so we were still just kind of sharing information. So we could go on. Oh yeah, the I could evening. talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> I've already gone into tomorrow in the UK, so you're oh, still in the same day. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I think we'll sign off. Thank you, Ellie, for doing this. So just have to say goodbye. So I'm going to say I'm. David Wormsey from davidwormsey.com. Goodbye. And you are? Me. I'm Ellie from roveconsulting.com. <laughs> <Hey>, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye.